Hi everyone. In this lecture, I would like to explain about introduction to antacids and monograph of aluminum hydroxide gel. Coming to the contents of this lecture, introduction to antacids, classification of antacids, ideal properties of antacids and combination of antacids used in the market and monograph of aluminum hydroxide gel. So coming to the antacids, antacids are nothing but agents or substances which are usually alkaline or basic in nature and they are used for neutralizing the excess gastric acid that is secreted in the stomach in the patients who are suffering from hyperacidity or hyperchloridria those are called as antacids the name itself those are anti to the acids so the antacids are anti to the gastric acid which is secreted in the stomach that means excess gastric acid which is secreted in the stomach that can be neutralized by using antacids. And types of antacids. Antacids are divided into mainly two types. Water soluble antacids and water insoluble antacids. The water soluble which are also called as systemic antacids and absorbable antacids. And water insoluble antacids are called as non systemic antacids as well as non absorbable antacids. So, let us discuss about water soluble or systemic or absorbable antacids. So, the name itself, these are soluble in water. They are soluble in water and uh, they are readily absorbable. Whenever we are using the particular antacid compounds, uh, those are readily absorbable and those are having the capable capability of producing systemic alkalosis. Whenever we are using these particular water soluble antacids, they are having the capability of producing systemic alkalosis. So that they are also called as systemic antacids. So example of water soluble or systemic or absorbable antacid that is sodium bicarbonate sodium bicarbonate and on the other hand we are having water insoluble antacids those are also called as non systemic antacids and non absorbable antacids the name itself those are insoluble in water and those are not absorbable and they are not having the capability of producing systemic alkalosis that's why those are called as water insoluble or non systemic or non absorbable antacids and coming to the examples of water insoluble antacids they are further divided into different types aluminum containing antacids examples are aluminum hydroxide gel dried aluminum hydroxide gel aluminum phosphate dihydroxy aluminum amino acetate dihydroxy aluminum sodium carbonate so in all these compounds you can observe aluminum that is present so that all these antacids are comes under the aluminum containing antacids which are water insoluble and magnesium containing antacids the examples are magnesia magnesium oxide is nothing but called as magnesia and magnesium carbonate milk of magnesia that is nothing but called as magnesium hydroxide mixture magnesium trisilicate magnesium citrate all these are magnesium containing antacids which are water insoluble antacids and coming to the calcium containing antacids calcium carbonate which is nothing but called as precipitated chalk and uh, calcium phosphate it is also called as tribasic calcium phosphate so calcium carbonate and tribasic calcium phosphate are the examples of calcium containing antacids and sodium and potassium containing antacids are sodium citrate and potassium citrate 
so all these are comes under water insoluble antacids aluminum containing antacids magnesium containing antacids calcium containing antacids sodium and potassium containing antacids all these are comes under the water insoluble antacids and coming to some of the points that are related to the water soluble and water insoluble antacids that is the water soluble antacids for example the sodium bicarbonate it is the example of water soluble antacid which is readily absorbable so that it is also called as absorbable antacid and they are having the capability of producing systemic alkalosis the problem with the use of water soluble antacids that is they can be easily or readily absorbable so that they can produce the systemic alkalosis so if it produce the systemic alkalosis that leads to disturb the acid base balance of our body fluids that is the problem with the use of water soluble or absorbable antacids so because of that reason nowadays the water insoluble antacids are widely used to avoid the systemic alkalosis condition so water insoluble antacids are not readily absorbable and they are not having the capability of producing systemic alkalosis so that uh, nowadays widely in the market the water insoluble antacids are used and coming to the patients who are on sodium restricted diets there are some patients who are on sodium restricted diets so in such condition carefully we can use the antacids especially the sodium containing antacids are avoided in such condition because the patients they are on sodium restricted diets so in such condition we don't want to use the sodium containing antacids and antacids containing calcium salts so there are some calcium containing antacids are there like calcium carbonate and uh, tribasic calcium phosphate so the use of calcium containing antacids or calcium salts of antacids that leads to produce constipation that is the problem with the use of calcium containing antacids similarly if we can use the magnesium containing antacids only if you can use the magnesium containing antacids like uh, magnesium oxide or magnesium carbonate or milk of magnesia that is nothing but magnesium hydroxide mixture so the use of magnesium containing antacids that leads to produce the laxative effect that is the problem with the use of magnesium containing antacids so because of these reasons nowadays in the market the combination of antacids which are used so the combination of constipative and laxative antacids which are available in the market to counteract the constipation and laxative effects and coming to the ideal properties of antacids antacids should not be absorbable otherwise that leads to produce systemic alkalosis as the problem and the antacids should inhibit the proteolytic enzyme pepsin and antacids should not produce the constipation effect and antacids should not produce the laxative effect and antacids should act rapidly over a prolonged time and the antacid preparations they are having the ph range in between 4 to 6 they should buffer in the ph range 4 to 6 and reaction of antacids with gastric acid should not cause large evolution of carbon dioxide gas so all these are the ideal properties of antacids but there is no one particular antacid that is available with all these properties so no antacid is ideal today but we can produce the ideal properties of antacids by mixing of two or more antacid compounds so here you can see that the combination of antacids generally in the market nowadays the antacid combination preparations are available in the form of mixture of different combinations the reason 
behind making of different combinations of antacids that is to balance the constipative effect produced from the calcium and aluminum containing antacids with the laxative effect produced by the magnesium antacids so the problem with the use of aluminum and calcium containing antacids that is constipation the problem with the use of only magnesium antacids that is laxative effect so to counteract both these effects we can use the mixer of calcium containing antacids and uh, magnesium containing antacids as the combination of antacids and these combinations of antacid preparations it includes dried aluminum hydroxide gel that is aluminum containing compound and magnesium containing compound that is either magnesium hydroxide mixer or magnesium trisilicate and sometimes uh, in the suspensions we are going to use the cimethicone as a deforming agent the examples of combination of antacids includes aluminum hydroxide gel and magnesium trisilicate this is one of the combination it is nothing but nothing but called as gelucil and combination of aluminum hydroxide gel magnesium hydroxide mixer that is nothing but milk of magnesia and methyl polysilates so in generally in the market this combination brand name that is gelucil mps aluminum hydroxide gel milk of magnesia and uh, methyl polysilates it is available with the brand name that is gelucil mps not only that even the aluminum hydroxide gel and magnesium hydroxide mixer combination that is available with the brand name dizein the dizein and uh, tablets and suspension that is available with the mixer of aluminum and magnesium containing antacids that is aluminum hydroxide gel and uh, milk of magnesia and not only that magnesia that is nothing but magnesium oxide and alumina and calcium carbonate which is used as combination of antacid preparation and during the preparation of antacid suspension so the cimethicone which is used as a deforming agent these are the various combinations of antacids that are available in the market and here you can see the gelucil mps the tablets and uh, the suspension that is available in the market so here you can see that uh, the gelucil mps consisting of uh, the combination of antacids that is aluminum hydroxide gel and uh, magnesium hydroxide mixer and methyl polysilax this is the composition of gelucil mps it is available in the form of tablets as well as suspension as antacid not only that even in the market uh, the dizein tablets as well as suspension that is available for the treatment of acidity it consisting of aluminum hydroxide gel and magnesium hydroxide mixer that is nothing but milk of magnesia so combination of aluminum hydroxide gel and magnesium hydroxide mixer which is used as antacid the brand name of that uh, tablets are suspension that is a dizein let us discuss about the monograph of aluminum hydroxide gel which is one of the aluminum containing antacid it is water insoluble antacid and the formula of aluminum hydroxide gel that is aloh thrice and it is also called as aluminum hydroxide suspension the molecular weight of aluminum hydroxide that is 78 g per mole and aluminum hydroxide gel or suspension is an aqueous suspension of hydrated aluminum oxide with basic aluminum carbonate and bicarbonate the preparation it also consisting of glycerin sorbitol sucrose or saccharin as sweetener and peppermint oil as flavor and these preparations also consisting of antimicrobial agents and this aluminum hydroxide gel preparation consisting of 
3.5% to 4.4% weight, weight by weight of aluminium oxide in its preparation. Aluminium hydroxide gel consisting of 3.5% to 4.4% weight by weight of aluminium oxide in its preparation. Coming to the properties of aluminium hydroxide gel or suspension, it is a white viscous suspension. The small amounts of clear liquid that may separate on long standing. So one of the important property of the suspension that is, and suspension it on long standing, a clear liquid that is going to be produced as the supernatant liquid. That is nothing but small amount of clear liquid may separate on long standing. And practically it is insoluble in water. So aluminum containing antacids are water insoluble. So practically it is insoluble in water. But soluble in aqueous alkaline solutions. Or in HCl solution or sulfuric acid and other strong acids in the presence of some water. This is the solubility of aluminum hydroxide gel. And aluminum hydroxide gel when it on treatment with gastric acid. Aluminum hydroxide gel when it on reacts with gastric acid that leads to produce aluminum chloride astringent or precipitate. So whenever we are using this aluminum hydroxide gel as antacid, it reacts with gastric acid, that is HCl, that leads to produce astringent or precipitate of aluminum chloride. So the formation of this particular astringent or precipitate of aluminum chloride that leads to produce nausea, vomiting and constipation, that is one of the problem. Coming to the preparation method of aluminum hydroxide gel. It is prepared by mixing of hot solutions of sodium carbonate and potash alum. It is prepared by mixing of hot solution of sodium carbonate, which is mixed with hot solution of potash alum in presence of water. It gives aluminum hydroxide. Along with that, the sodium sulfate and potassium sulfate and carbon dioxide gas that is released. So all those sodium sulfate and potassium sulfate that can be removed by washing with water. And after getting this aluminum hydroxide, the suitable preservatives or sweeteners or flavoring agents or antimicrobial agents which are added while making the tablets preparation or suspension preparation. So here it is aluminum hydroxide gel or suspension, suspension. So while making the suspension here we are going to add some suitable preservatives, sweeteners, flavoring agents and antimicrobial agents which are added. And another method of preparation of aluminum hydroxide gel that is, it is prepared by the reaction of aluminum chloride with water. That is nothing but hydrolysis of aluminum chloride. Hydrolysis of aluminum chloride with water that leads to produce aluminum hydroxide. These are the preparation methods of aluminum hydroxide gel. And coming to the identification test for the aluminum hydroxide gel, the solutions of aluminum hydroxide in dilute HCl gives reactions of aluminum salts. A sample that is aluminum hydroxide gel which is treated with dilute HCl so that it produces a particular solution. That solution it gives the positive result for aluminum salts. So that solution that is tested for the aluminum salts. So aluminum salts containing sample it on treatment with excess sodium hydroxide that leads to produce the tetrahydroxy aluminate ion which is soluble one so aluminum salts when it on treatment with sodium hydroxide it is soluble in that sodium hydroxide and that leads to produce tetrahydroxy aluminate ion then further this tetrahydroxy aluminate ion which on treatment with uh, ammonium chloride solution when it on treatment with ammonium chloride solution it produce aluminium hydroxide and ammonia so whatever this aluminium hydroxide and ammonia that is produced in that combined together that leads to produce in the form of gelatinous white precipitate so the formation of this gelatinous white precipitate that indicates that presence of aluminium ions in the sample 
and another identification test for the aluminum salts that is a sample consisting of aluminum salts which on treatment with uh, ammonium acetate it on treatment with ammonium acetate in presence of mordant blue 3 it produce purple color aluminum salts it on reaction with ammonium acetate in presence of mordant blue 3 it produce purple color that indicates the presence of aluminum ions in the sample these are the identification tests for the aluminum ions which are present in the sample and coming to the test for purity of aluminum hydroxide gel the ph of the aluminum hydroxide suspension that is 5.528 the ph of the suspension it should be in between 5.5 to 8 and aluminum hydroxide gel which is alkaline in nature because it is the antacid which is basic in nature so the alkalinity of the sample that is determined by titrating an aqueous solution of the sample with 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid solution using indicator methyl red that indicates alkalinity alkaline nature of the aluminum hydroxide gel coming to the acceptable limits of chloride ions that is not more than 0.25 percent and acceptable limits of sulfate ions not more than 0.3 percent acceptable limits of iron in the sample that is not more than 20 ppm acceptable acceptable limits of heavy metals not more than 10 ppm acceptable limits of arsenic in the aluminum hydroxide gel that is not more than 1 ppm and test for microbial contamination the viable aerobic count that is not more than 100 microorganisms per ml so if you test for the microbial content of that particular aluminum hydroxide gel or suspension there should not be more than 100 microorganisms per ml of the suspension and the suspension that particular uh, one ml of the suspension what we are tested for the microbial contamination it should be completely free from E. coli, Escherichia coli, gram negative organism. It should be completely free from Escherichia coli organisms. This is about test for purity of aluminum hydroxide gel. And here the aluminum hydroxide gel it is the antacid which is having some neutralizing capacity so that we have to test for neutralizing capacity of the aluminum hydroxide gel. While performing the neutralizing capacity of the aluminum hydroxide gel, it consumes not more than 50 ml of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. The procedure for neutralizing capacity that is 5 grams of the suspension which is placed in 100 ml of hot water, the temperature that is maintained at 37 degrees centigrade. So while performing this neutralizing capacity test, we have to maintain the temperature at each and every step that is 37 degrees centigrade. So initially the 5, 5 grams of suspension which is placed in 100 ml of hot water and maintain the temperature at 37 degrees centigrade. Then add 100 ml of 0.1 molar HCl solution which is previously heated to 37 degrees centigrade. And stir and maintain the temperature at 37 degrees centigrade. After 20 minutes, the pH of the solution becomes 3 to 4.5. So whenever the pH of the solution it becomes 3 to 4.5, then add 10 ml of 0.5 molar HCl solution, which is previously heated at 37 degrees centigrade. Stir continuously for one hour and during that process maintain the temperature that is 37 degrees centigrade and finally titrate with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution and the amount of sodium hydroxide solution that is consumed it should not more than 50 ml if it is not more than 50 ml of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide consumption that indicates that the sample which is having good neutralizing capacity if it is more if it is more than 50 ml if it is more than 50 ml that indicates which is not having that much neutralizing capacity coming to the assay procedure of aluminum hydroxide gel 
It is assayed by complexometric titration method. 5 grams of the sample that is dissolved in 3 ml of HCl solution by heating on water bath and then cool the mixer to below 20 degrees centigrade and dilute up to 100 ml with water. So from that 100 ml we have to take 20 ml of the mixture and then add 40 ml of 0 0.05 molar disodium EDTA and 80 ml of water and 0 0.15 ml of methyl red and after addition of all these contents neutralize it by addition of 1 molar sodium hydroxide solution in drop wise manner. Neutralization by addition of 1 molar sodium hydroxide solution by dropwise manner. And then further warm the complete mixture in water bath for about 30 minutes. Then add 3 grams of hexamine and finally titrate with 0 0.05 molar lead nitrate solution using indicator xylenol orange. This is the assay procedure that is complexometric titration. And coming to the uses of aluminum hydroxide gel or suspension, it is used as an antacid for the treatment of gastric ulcers. It is used in the treatment of hyperacidity or hyperchloridria condition. And this particular aluminum hydroxide gel or suspension, it is the water insoluble and non absorbable antacid so that it does not produce systemic alkalosis and it is also used in cosmetics preparation this is about uses of aluminum hydroxide gel and the complete monograph that is related to the aluminum hydroxide gel or suspension and thank you all here i would like to express my sincere thanks to the authors of the following books indian pharmacopoeia 2018 edition and pharmaceutical inorganic chemistry by G.R. Chatwal and a textbook of inorganic pharmaceutical chemistry by Surendranath Pandeya and pharmaceutical inorganic chemistry by V. Alagar Swami. And finally, I would like to express my gratitude towards JN2K Kakinada and APSHE that is Andhra Pradesh State Council of Higher Education and State Government of Andhra Pradesh for giving this opportunity for making the e-content videos. Thank you.